Once you've finished adding contacts into your account, spend some time getting your mass email templates set up so that they'll be ready to go whenever you need to reach out to people. So head over to eBlast. This is what we call our mass email tool. Click on save templates and create template here. You might like to create a template for each communication type that you do. So maybe you'll have one for newsletters, one for volunteer reach outs, uh, whatever you like. Or you might just have one that you use for everything. But I'm going to have a couple. This one's going to be my fundraising template. You can choose from Keeler's default templates. So these are some templates we've created that you can use as a kind of baseline. You can select any one of these that you think looks good. We've got little sections like newsletter and fundraising here, and you can change the colors and the images and the text to really make it your own. So it's a great option if you don't have much experience with building mass emails and you'd like to get some ideas about formatting. So just hover over and click select if that's what you're after. Alternatively, if you're feeling adventurous, scroll down to the bottom and choose our blank eBlast template here and you can build from scratch. That's what I'm going to do today. In this video, I'm going to explain how the eBlast Builder works and where you can go to get more information. So we won't cover everything. I don't want to make this training video too long, uh, but I'll try and hit the highlights and afterwards you'll feel really empowered to go and find any more information that you need. First, you'll see three rows here on the left. This is where you'll be starting out. Each row represents the header, body, and footer of your eBlast. Head to the Style tab over here to adjust the overall color scheme and formatting of your eBlast. So this is kind of the overarching style tool. Here, you can adjust the layout, so whether you want the eBlast to be full width or centered, I'll show you that in a second, as well as the color and padding of each of the headers and the link colors of the header body and footer. So let's take a look at what that looks like, just so you can see. So I might make the header purple and I'll make the footer purple. I'm going to add some padding to the header. I'm going to leave no padding in the body, body but I'll put some padding on the footer. So you can see how padding now has created sort of separate areas. So I, that's how I've separated the header and the footer from the body. And then maybe I want to change it to full width. That's what that means. If you have it as full width, it'll stretch the background to the full width of the email. I think best practices is centered though these days. I think that's the most popular one, but who knows? By the time you're watching this video, it may have switched back. The trends are always changing. So spend some time playing around with this to see how it kind of affects the style of your eBlast. Next, let's go back to layout. So this is where the real fun happens. This is how you add content to your eBlast. The builder works with a drag and drop functionality. So the first thing you need to do is add a row. That's step number one. And then once you've added a row, you can add a content block. So spend some time playing around with this to see how it kind of affects the style of your eBlast. Next, let's go back to layout. So this is where the real fun happens. This is how you add content to your eBlast. The builder works with a drag and drop functionality. So the first thing you need to do is add a row. That's step number one. And then once you've added a row, you can add a content block. So first, choose the amount of columns that you'd like to be in your row. So this is one column and then this is three and then we've got different variations of two columns. So these content blocks here are going to be sitting within those columns. So maybe I just want one up the top, which I'm going to use for one content block here, one down the bottom, and then maybe I'll put in a couple of variations in the middle. I kind of like to mix up the positions of everything when I'm working like that. Once you've dropped each row in, they'll, that'll allow you to be able to drop content blocks. So these can only be dropped directly onto rows. For example, I want uh, the, the one single column at the top of my header to be an image. So I'm going to click and drop an image in there. And you can upload images directly from here. You can choose social media if you've got those connected. You can do a web search. So maybe I want to search for a cat, see what comes up. Let's try that one there. And then you can upload that directly in there. I'm regretting choosing that cat. I think I'm gonna go with this one here. <laughs> it's a little less ominous. That cat was really ominous. Once you've got it in there, you can adjust the size 
here. Maybe you put your logo up the top or your the name of your organization. But that's how you can upload images. I'm not going to go through every content block, but I'll just hit the top ones. Next, I'm going to do a text block in here. So the text sort of editing tools are really straightforward. You've got all your kind of regular formatting. If you've used Microsoft Word or Google Docs, this should all look very familiar. But one thing I do want to point out is smart codes. Smart codes allow you to put a placeholder in your eblast that will pull from your contacts profiles and, and replace that placeholder with the actual information. So you've got first name, you've got full name, all that kind of stuff. If you wanted, you could do, you know, their title, their first name, their last name to build their full name. But the most uh, sort of fancy one we have is smart name. I'm going to choose that one here. And what smart name does is it first checks for the preferred name on a contacts profile. And if that's empty, it'll go to first name and check there. And if all else fails and these two are empty, it'll use whatever's in the full name. So it's really cool. It's kind of a bit more dynamic. I recommend using that one whenever, whenever you're using a smart code. Just please make sure that the information that is stored in your contacts profiles is up to date so that when we pull this information, it's the correct one. Okay, I can also add a button to my eBlast. So this can be really good if you want to put a big giant call to action in your eBlast so that folks know exactly what they need to do. So you can hyperlink it, you can connect that button to your website or to social media maybe, or what's really cool is you can connect it directly to a Keeler form that you've created in your Keeler account. So for example, if you've created a donation form, you can link it directly to this button. Now maybe I'll choose a donation form that I've created in here. Looks like I don't have any going at the moment, but I could have chosen one from there and someone who clicks on this will be taken straight there. And the same thing works for things like custom forms. If you need people to fill out information or provide their most up-to-date contact information to make sure that your smart codes are all working correctly, that's how you can kind of interact with that button there. You can add website icons, so I'll click and drag those over here, and these will automatically update with any of the URLs that you've put in your organization profile. One thing I will point out, that for any of the content blocks in here that populate information from your organization profile, so I think it's just websites and footer, if you're using a pre-built Keeler template, this information might already be in that template. And if that's the case, then that would have been created before you updated your organization profile. So I would just delete it and re-add it uh, if you're using a pre-built template. We need the action of clicking and dragging it into the eBlast to pull from the organization profile. So the last and most important thing I wanna cover, the most important content you can add to your eBlast is this footer here. So this footer contains an unsubscribe link and your mailing address, which are guarantee, which guarantee that you're compliant with anti-spam laws. You do need this to be on every mass marketing email you send out. You'll notice that I don't have any rows left. The rows that I added from up here have all been taken up. And if I click and drag it there, it'll ask me, do I want to replace this content block? But no, I don't. What I want is to add this on top. So just remember that you must have a row before you can add a content block. I think sometimes folks might miss this step, uh, but really important because it's what helps to keep the email in place when it gets sent to the inboxes of people. Having these rows anchors these content blocks in place so that they don't move around. But I've got a row, so I'm gonna add a footer and there's that information automatically populating here. Once you're done, click save and continue and your template will be added to the saved templates tab that we accessed at the start. If at any point during that process you have any questions, head to our knowledge base where we have a bunch of articles about eBlast in here. So you can just search for eBlast or just search for what you're looking for specifically. So maybe you had a question about some of the content blocks that were available. You can look for that and find out how to design your eBlast template rows and content blocks article here where we talk about the sections uh, and all of the different types of content blocks that are available in great detail. So ultimately, I think the best thing uh, to sort of get an idea of is just to head to 
the knowledge base itself and get a glance at the eBlast tile here because we've got a bunch of different articles. We've split it up into sort of learning what eBlasts are, learning about anti-spam laws, building and sending. This is the process we're covering today and then some other handy articles as well. So now you'll be able to choose it whenever you are creating an eBlast, it will appear alongside those kind of default templates we saw. So you're good to go, you're ready for the next time you need to send out an email.